All right, so we've built the interface. We've implemented the interface in a class. And now, in order to make these things uh, connect and work, we need to add a service that's going to uh, put these together. And so where do we do services? That's in our program CS or setup file. And so after our little DB context that we've added in, we'll put in this line that says builder dot services dot add scoped. And then what we say is the interface first, so I baseball repository, and then comma, and then EF baseball repository. Closing angle brace, opening closing parenthesis, semicolon. And so what this little line does, and again, I would not worry too much about this, is that make sure that every HTTP request, so remember that ultimately what's gonna happen is our app's gonna sit up on a server and it's just gonna be battered all day long as people try to access what we're building. And so um, each this is saying give each uh, request, not the interface file itself, but uh, an instance of EF baseball repository. And so each HTTP request is going to get its own uh, repository object, okay? And so, uh, anyway, that's all I'm gonna say on that. So, so each one, every time they make a request, they get, it takes the, the template, builds a, an interface implementation of, of type EF baseball repository that is an object that then sits with that user on their individual uh, client machine. All right, so that's set up now, so that's good. Now, how do we make this all work? And so um, we can do that by going back to our home controller, and then in the home controller, now, instead of giving uh, this class access to the um, context file itself, we're going to use a similar methodology, but instead what we're going to be getting is an I baseball repository. So I baseball repository, we call it temp or whatever we want to call it. And then here, uh, again, it's going to be, you know, between that brace and that brace is its life. And so we don't want to store it there. Instead, we'll store it up here. So this is an I baseball repository that we can refer to a lot of times we'll just do underscore repo so underscore repo and then here we're going to set repo equal to what came in on the temp and then um, as we load this up instead of using our context we'll use underscore repo all right so we've got it all set up now we, we built our interface we built the implementation of the interface we set up the service, and now we are building, we're, we're accessing the repo instead of accessing the, the context file itself. All right, so we run this. And if we've done everything right, big question mark, then it should run exactly the same. All right, and magically it does. So we're get, still getting that BS1, the, imp the, the, the implementation of the program still goes exactly the same, but what we have done is we have abstracted that context file so that it um, we're not accessing the context file directly anymore. We're just accessing this thing called the iBaseball repository. And that's all that this class knows about, okay? But the cool part now, and this is, whenever you do stuff like this, whenever you talk about some of these more advanced concepts, I know it's lost on you because you're saying, well, why the heck did we do that? That's more work and it's creating this other layer. Like, why do we need to do that? And the answer is the benefit now comes in that if I wanna put some dummy data in here, so my database isn't even built yet. I just wanna put some dummy data in or maybe my database is built 
but I don't want to, I want to test, but I don't want to put bad data into my database in order to test it and see if it works okay. And so either way, then I can, in my little interface file that I built, instead of, whoops, not that one, my EF baseball repository, here, instead of loading up the actual data, I can just build some dummy records and send those over. And from the, the home controller's perspective, it doesn't know the difference. It just knows that it got some objects in, right? Because currently, we're going in and loading up a list of objects. Well, couldn't I just say a new instance of, so set that equal the list, here's my first entry, here's my second entry, here's my third entry, here's my fourth entry into this list of managers and then pass that in and never touch the context file. And then that way I can test to see if this is working without having an actual database. And then again, if later on I decide that I'm going to uh, you know, change something, move to a different uh, DBMS, then this code remains exactly intact. This code, well, almost re remains exactly intact. I was going to say we'll have to change which one we're using. and, and uh, But other than that, it's minimal changes to, to update it. And so a lot of benefit from a programming perspective in wrapping this little context file in a box called an iBaseball repository and then using this I, iBaseball repository instead. And so this is um, the pattern that we use in, in setting up the database. If you go look at any books or videos or whatever, this is how it's gonna be set up. But I think it's, um, as I thought about how to teach this stuff, I think it's better to understand the context file and what's going on with it first, and then show you the repository pattern. Because if we'd just done this from the beginning, I think there'd be a little bit of confusion on what was going on with that context file. And uh, you know, in your own app, you can, you can access it directly if you want to. This is all for benefit for future stuff for updating, for testing, um, to make sure that your app is running the way it ought to. So that is the repository pattern and it will be expected in any other database stuff we do for the rest of this course. So um, hopefully that's helpful to take a look at that together and uh, hopefully it makes some sense in, in terms of why we're doing it, if, even if you don't understand exactly some of what the exact lines are, of code are doing. So with that, Spencer out.